Hello Bay Ridge. Welcome to another edition of After Hours. Today we're going to be talking a little bit more from our lesson on submitting to God's discipline. And particularly I want to focus on godly grief, lament, and sorrow. And I want to answer a few questions of how are we to grieve when we suffer? Are we even allowed to grieve? And this is a very painful question for many of us. Because we know the pain and the sorrow of grieving and it seemingly only adds to our burdens. We cry and we cry and our tears, they pile up as high as heaven and it seems that they just crush us. And that is because we are, we are expressing worldly sorrow, worldly sorrow that leads unto death, but not godly grief. And so I want to talk a little bit about what that looks like. An emotion that is suppressed, bottled up, kept down, is an emotion that's not brought to God. And God commands us to lament to Him. The Psalms, Lamentations, all these wonderful scriptures are full of examples of God's saints pouring out their souls in lament, in sorrow, in godly grief back to the Lord. And if none of those examples suffice, remember our Master, Jesus Christ. He was sorrowful unto the point of death. He knew the agony. He knew what it was like to weep the loss of his best friend. He knew he could experience the human pains of all, all of those around us. And in fact, as God being omnipresent, he knows our sorrow and he probably hurts, not probably, he does hurt hurt and know the, the depth of the injustice that you're suffering better than you do. He weeps for your sins. He weeps for the unjust things that have come against you. He weeps for all the brokenness of his creation. Therefore, we should not be afraid to grieve. What are we to grieve? Remember in Romans 8, there's a section in verses 20 to 25 that talks about how the world has been unwillingly subjected to futility. And they haven't done this willingly, but because of the will of God who has subjected the world to this futility. But he did this. He subjected us to suffering, to brokenness, to pain. And creation knows this. And they are looking forward to the hope of the redemption of not only creation, but the glorification of the sons and the children of God. The freedom of the glory of the children of God, it says. So all creation groans, laments, feels the pain of suffering. But not only creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, we groan inwardly as we wait, we long for our adoption as sons and the redemption of our bodies. And there are brothers and sisters out there who know exactly what I'm talking about when you long for the redemption of your bodies. Maybe it's health. Maybe it's just the redemption of yourself from sin. You long for it. But hope that is seen is not hope. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. And it's in that patient waiting that enduring of sorrow, that we have the privilege and the, the gift of a lament. Anybody can cry, but only the Christian can lament. And it is a privilege, and actually, it's a wonderful privilege. And we must not be afraid to do that, specifically when it comes to unjust suffering. We all know the consequences that we deserve when we suffer because of our own doing, when we sin, when we, when we reap what we sow. And I'm talking here specifically about unjust suffering, something you had really nothing to do with, or very little at very least, maybe a tragic accident or something of the like. Those examples of unjust suffering, those are times where all you can do is cry to God and wait for his justice. For he is going to bring justice. He will vindicate his saints. Think of how he's waited for 2,000 years to vindicate his son, Jesus Christ. He still has not executed his judgment on those who crucified him and all those who mock him even now today. But he's waiting. And he is also patient. He's asking us to be patient during our sorrow, but he is also patient. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promises, some count slowness, but he is patient. And he's wishing that all would repent and come to a knowledge of the truth. And if he can do that, if he can groan in the labors of childbirth while he waits for his creation, to be vindicated when he brings his judgment, then certainly we can wait these few short years as we wait for that judgment and that justice. Do not be afraid to lament. It is a Christian privilege. The world does not have any access to this. Godly grief, it's one of the sweetest privileges we have. And why is this? It's because God holds all of our tears in his bottle. He has kept a record of all of our tossings. They are written down in his book. In Exodus, the Lord heard the groanings of Israel, and God knew. God knows your suffering. He knows what you are going through. He understands it. He is more upset about the sin and injustice and brokenness that has come upon you than you could ever be. And He is ready to justify you. He's ready to vindicate you. I think many of us 
we often don't look at the judgment of God as something that our hope should be in. We kind of avoid that. We don't like the subject of God's wrath. But if you don't treasure God's wrath, if you don't treasure his goodness and his righteous judges, justice, excuse me, you will never have any hope for the unjust things you suffer today. For if he just lets things slide, if he just doesn't have wrath, if he doesn't utterly consume all the adversaries and the wicked and the evildoers and the one who leads them, Satan, then we have no hope of vindication. You have no hope that you will be justified. You have no hope that any of this was worth it. But with his righteous wrath and anger, it will be worth it. He will not let even the thought of the heart against you or against him go unpunished. And we have to remember during this that as we cherish his judgment, and we're able to cry that out, trusting that God knows, that God has heard our cries, that he will bring justice, we must also remember at the same time the gospel, that God has put that same wrath that we deserved on the shoulders of Jesus Christ. And therefore, we no longer have to endure that. And with that knowledge in mind, we can lament, we can cry hours, we can sob, we can weep in Jesus' arms and feel that peace that overwhelms our soul, a peace that no worldly man or natural knowledge can understand. And then we can be motivated to love others, even though we ourselves are full of grief. Remember as Christ, he weeped for Lazarus, but then he moved on to do his ministry. And that looked like raising the dead. I don't know what that looks like for you in your case, but know this, God is working all things together for those whom are called according to his purpose, and he's working them for good. And that is true in your case. He's asking you right now, will you trust me? Though you can't see anything, though everything around you seems to be a raging sea as if you were about to capsize the very next moment, will you trust that I'm master of the sea? Will you trust me that this pain is worth it? That I'm going to grow something so big out of this mustard seed of faith that the birds and all creation will gather in its branches and nest there? The kingdom of heaven is very much not a thing we would expect. And the, the joys and the purposes of your suffering that you're going through now, it's not something that you would have expected. What God has prepared for those who love him is something that has not entered the human mind, nor has the heart even imagined. But that is a promise of what he will do for us. And we, we learn this in the gospel, and now we trust to experience that in a greater fullness in our walk with Christ. Brothers and sisters, let us bring our laments to God. Let us be sorrowful in his arms, not a sorrow, worldly sorrow leading to death, but godly grief that leads to repentance of our own sin and brokenness, but also to a knowledge of the truth of where this world is going and what God intends to do with it. What you meant for evil, God meant for good. And we can always say that. I hope this has been a blessing to you and will help you to process your grief and your sorrow as you face suffering in your life. You're not alone. Brothers and sisters all over the world are going through suffering, and we go through it together. Thank you.